Of course, on the back to the backdrop of all of this is this Khashoggi story. It couldn't come at a worse time for Donald Trump. You have Rand Paul talking about the, the need to cut off all military funding to Saudi Arabia, Lindsey Graham, others being very outspoken. And the news coming out, we're not surprised that at the end of the day, Donald Trump is willing to trade U.S. foreign policy and American values for cold, hard cash at his hotels, at his resorts. We had heard stories that other people had been abandoning some of Trump's properties, but the Saudis are still reliable customers. And there's Donald Trump during the campaign saying, I love him, but give me 40, 50 million dollars. It's just like Don Jr. back in what, 2009, 2010 saying, we love the Russians. We get most of our money from them. Yeah, for all the circus of Kanye West in the Oval Office yesterday, to me, the most striking comment came from the president in the Oval Office when he talked about Khashoggi and he wondered, as we heard in that clip, is he actually a citizen? He's not even an American citizen. He is a legal yeah. resident, by the way. But his defense, his explanation for not wanting to act on this now anyway, was that $110 billion arms deal. And the president of the United States, talking about a man who's credibly been accused of having been abducted, murdered, and dismembered, said, what am I going to do, give up that $110 billion deal so Russia can get the money, so China can get the money, and they make the deal with Saudi Arabia. It all comes down to money with him, but we're talking about a Washington Post reporter who is a legal resident of the United States of America in Virginia. And of course, the reports are, and they're still just reports, but most people believe, Mika, that he was lured to the embassy on a plot that the leader of Saudi Arabia knew about. Uh, MBS, and then he was killed and he was dismembered. And Donald Trump's response: Hey, we get a lot of money from him. And he wasn't a citizen. So there, there, there are Trump's values, uh, not American values. Those are Donald Trump's values. And one more thing for voters to think about as they go to the polls this uh, this fall: Saudi sheiks, their cash, mm -hmm. and their oil. Trump's American values. Well, there is new reporting on the disappearance of Washington Post columnist Jamal Khashoggi. He walked into the Saudi Arabian consulate in Turkey on October 2nd and hasn't been seen since. According to the Post, the Turkish government has told U.S. officials that it has audio and video recordings that prove Khashoggi was interrogated, tortured, murdered, and dismembered. The Post also reports that Turkish officials are hesitant to release those recordings due to the fears they could reveal how Ankara spies on foreign entities. NBC News has not been able to independently confirm the reports, and Saudi Arabia claims Khashoggi left the consulate soon after entering and denies a role in his disappearance. As Willie mentioned, in an interview yesterday, President Trump expressed concern that Khashoggi may have been killed during a visit, visit to the Saudi consulate in Turkey, but went on to praise U.S. relations with Saudi Arabia as, quote, excellent and insisted that any potential consequences for the disappearance of the U.S.-based journalist would not be economic. There are certainly other ways of handling the situation, but I will tell you up front right now, and I'll say it in front of senators, uh, they're spending $110 billion purchasing military equipment and other things. Uh, if we don't sell it to them, they'll say, well, thank you very much, we'll buy it from Russia, or thank you very much, we'll buy it from China. There are other things we can do. Let's find out what the problem is first, okay? I oppose, I would not be in favor of stopping a country from spending $110 billion, which is an all-time record. First, I want to find out what happened, and we're looking. Again, this took place in Turkey, and to the best of our knowledge, uh, Khashoggi is not a United States citizen. Is that right, or is that right? It's a permanent resident, okay. We don't like it, John. We don't like it, and we don't like it even a little bit. But as to whether or not we should stop $110 billion from being spent in this country, knowing they have four or five alternatives, two very good alternatives, that would not be acceptable to me. For what it's worth, the Washington Post notes that the president claim about Saudi Arabia making $110 billion in arms purchases, which he has been making since the spring of 2017, is false.
The Post notes that most of the publicly announced items from a summit in 2017 had been previously announced by the Obama administration, and there appeared to be few, if any, signed contracts. Rather, many of the announcements were memorandums of intent. A year and a half later, they conclude that the $110 billion figure is not real and unlikely to come to fruition. And even if it did, it represents sales far into the future, Joe. Another lie, of course, but we're, we're used to that. And, you know, Gene Robinson, we're even used to Donald Trump selling out America and, and undermining America's values and selling out his soul and uh, his administration's soul for cold, mm -hmm. hard cash. Yeah. Uh, and here he, he's talking. It's a smokescreen, really, where he's talking about it's just like with Vladimir Putin. He defends Vladimir Putin and has since December of 2015 on this show. And he did it because of the Russians, as Don Jr. said, that's where they get a lot of their money from Russia. And he's, he's been wanting to build Trump Towers in Russia forever. Here, it's about money for Donald Trump, too. He's willing yeah. to, to hawk American values, allow a Washington Post colleague, one, uh, a columnist, one of your colleagues, to be, to be, to be chopped up. And, uh, and he said, we're not going to do anything about that. And, and this, sadly, it's not shocking, because this is who Donald Trump is to his core. Mm. That was a grotesque performance yes. in, in the White House yesterday, and, and, and just explicitly equating, uh, you know, uh, well, on the one hand, this awful, unspeakable thing happened, and they did it. On the other hand, um, gee, they give us a lot of money. And what he's really thinking is, they give me a lot of money. Wow. Um, they spend a lot of money at his hotels. He, he's looking... Um, toward the day when at, at some point he's, he's no longer president and, and I, I certainly hopes to cash in, in, in to an even greater extent on this relationship. There's somebody else who ought to be mentioned in this uh, whole thing, which is uh, Jared Kushner, who yes. has uh, led the administration in establishing this very close, unquestioning relationship with Mohammed bin Sal Salman, going all in on the Saudis as our new Best buddies in the Middle East who have all the who have the right solutions uh, to that intractable problem. Intractable problem. He's he's gotten uh, the administration's gotten nothing out of it. Um, uh, they were supposed to get all these uh, you know better relationships with Israel. They haven't gotten that. They haven't gotten um, uh, any sort of uh, peace dividend. Uh, it's uh, it's it's but, amateur but, but Gene, hour. You don't understand. It. Gene, it's not amateur hour. They weren't looking for that in the first place. Well, you're right. They're Joe. looking you're for right. fun. They're looking. No, they're looking for funding for their projects, whether exactly. it's six six six, whether it's Kushner, Donald exactly. Trump's hotel, whether it's Kushner properties, whether it's mm -hmm. Trump properties. We have said this from the beginning. Mm -hmm. I can't yeah. repeat this enough. This in, mm -hmm. Donald Trump did not expect to be elected president. He is using his position to leverage mm -hmm. it as much yeah. as he can to make as much cash. So, Gene, that's mm -hmm. why. Yeah. It's not amateur hour. They don't give a damn about how much money America I gets. Stand they give That's a true. damn about how much Trump <laughs> gets, how much the Kushner family gets. And the right. Saudis, and, and like the Russians, great customers. And they're getting the pay. Um, they're getting that payoff. They're getting that payoff, and and later for the country, and later for human rights. And unfortunately, um, what what was done to Jamal Khashoggi is just, um, it, it's it's just unbelievable. The, it's uh, it's yeah. certainly cast a pall over our offices, and uh, and made me very sad for the for this country. Very sad. Very sad. Very sad for the country. And Caddy K, it, it raises some questions that we have to answer. And that is, with something like this, known as widespread as it was reportedly known throughout the intel community, what did Donald Trump know about the, the MBS plot? When did he know it? What did Jared Kushner know about the MBS plot? When did he know it? What did the DNI know about the MBS plot? You know, what did they do about it? Who did, when did they know it? Who did they tell at the White House, the FBI, the CIA? All of these intel agencies, what did they know and when did they inform the White House that an American, who, uh, that an American uh, uh, resident who was applying for a green card, who was a columnist at the Washington Post, was being set up and they had a legal duty based on a 2015 law to warn him? Those yeah, I mean, questions the, have to be answered, don't they? 
Yes, and the president has not answered them. The Washington Post reporting is that the intel community had these intercepts that showed that it was Mohammed bin Salman himself who wanted to have Khashoggi lured back to Saudi Arabia in order to detain him. Um, the president initially said he knew nothing about it. That seems implausible given that this was widely distributed amongst all of those bits of the intelligence services that deal with Saudi Arabia, certainly uh, to the national security team in the White House as well. And did they have a duty to warn Khashoggi? The that is something of a gray area because it's not clear whether the intelligence that the U.S. had showed that actually Mohammed bin Salman was planning to harm Khashoggi. If they knew that they were going to harm him, yes, they had a duty to warn. Um, but if they thought they were just going to bring him back and arrest him, they could fudge it and say, no, we didn't have a duty to actually pass that information on. I do think this is about more than this man. This is about more than human rights. This is about more even than the freedom of the press. This really is about what role America wants to have in the world right now. What what kind of leadership America has around the world because are we a country that is America a country that is working totally transactionally and has no interest in propagating human rights democracy rule of law good governance the role that America has had for the last 70 years and in many ways this Khashoggi mm. case obscure that it might seem is a real test of what America's leadership is going to be in the role in the world right now because other countries are watching other authoritarian countries are watching and they're thinking if America can get away with this, if America is going to turn a blind eye to this kind of behavior, we can act with impunity. So why, why has President Trump been soft peddling his criticism of Saudi Arabia so far? Well, consider this. President Trump's ties to Saudi Arabia go well beyond the Oval Office, with his businesses having connection to the country and with leaders there as far back as the 90s. According to the Washington Post, Trump and his companies have conducted various deals with the Saudi government and business executives from that country over the years. The Post says one example includes 1991, when Trump was nearly $900 billion in debt from failed casino projects and he sold his 281-foot yacht to Saudi Prince Al-Walid bin Talal for $20 million. The paper says a few years later, the prince bought a stake in Trump's Plaza Hotel by agreeing to pay off some of Trump's debts on the property. The Post goes on to report that businesses from Saudi-connected customers continue to be vital after Trump won the presidency, including Saudi lobbyists who spent $270,000 last year to reserve rooms at Trump's hotel in Washington. The paper adds that just this year, Trump's hotels in New York and Chicago have reported significant upticks in bookings from Saudi visitors. The president has not been shy about his affinity for Saudi Arabia, bragging at a 2015 rally about his businesses with that country. Saudi Arabia, and I get along great with all of them. They buy apartments from me, they spend 40 million, 50 million. Am I supposed to dislike them? I like them very much. So, Rick Stengel, there are a lot of cross currents here in the relationship with Saudi Arabia. You have arms sales, you have the war in Yemen, which we haven't talked about much yet. Um, you have Jared working with MBS on Middle East peace and creating a cozy relationship with him. Bob Corker said something yesterday that kind of got buried. He said he's picked up, as the chair of the Foreign Relations Committee, a, quote, sense of arrogance from Saudi leaders in the way they deal with lawmakers, as if to say, all we have to do is go to Donald Trump. By the way, let me just say first, Willie, is he the worst negotiator in history? He takes the biggest thing off the table before he even negotiates with the Saudis, which is the arms sales. Mm. Is that good negotiating? If you're a good negotiator, you say, well, we'll have to look at our arms sales, and we'll, they're, they're very high, and we know we're the best arms dealer, and they don't want to buy it from anybody else. No, Trump takes it off the table. He's a terrible negotiator. Secondly. As, as I think I mentioned, I met with Mohammed bin Salman in Riyadh at midnight for two hours in early 2016. He's a very compelling figure. I understand why he and Jared get along. They're both princes. You know, the Saudis understand yeah. that the son-in-law also rises in American politics. They can deal with that. But the problem is he's a very mixed bag. Yes, as he told me in that meeting, I'm going to let women drive. I'm going to let people go to the cinema. But he's also doing this indiscriminate bombing in Yemen, which is a humanitarian disaster. He brought all of his fellow princes to the Ritz-Carlton without due process and extorted money from them. He, he doesn't understand how to operate in the modern world. There's good and bad. A, a more traditional American administration would go, look, MBS, you know, we like this, we don't like that. If you do more of this, you can have a better relationship with us. But with, with, with Jared and with Trump, it's just completely an open door. If you're spending with us, you can do anything with impunity. And the fact that they 
are not outraged about an American resident being killed in a Saudi consulate is just really extraordinary. It really crosses a red line. So, Rick, why do you suspect he's playing dumb? Because we already know from published reports that U.S. intelligence intercepted communications of Saudis talking about abducting Khashoggi. U.S. intelligence knows that the Saudi government was out to get this Washington if, Post column. So what's the, he up to here? Well, if that's the case, and let's presume that it is, I mean, I think he's looking to not have culpability. I mean, one of the, you know, what, what is the first job of the president of the United States to protect American citizens and American residents? And, they, and he let everybody down. And the fact that they might have known this advance and not, in advance and not warned the Saudis, not called Mohammed bin Salman, what's the use of having a personal relationship with someone if you don't say, hey, dude, you can't do this? Well, and, and uh, you, this personal relationship we have found Jeremy Peters is one-sided. I mean, it, it's, it's, the Saudis get whatever the Saudis want to get. All they have to do is flash a picture of Donald Trump up on a building when he comes to visit. And, you know, MBS uh, is nice to Jared Kushner, and they basically get free reign. Bob Corker yesterday talking about how arrogant the Saudis are how arrogant their leadership is uh, towards elected members of Congress. There's a great way to fix that, isn't there? Uh, defund the Saudis. They've got the checkbook. Donald Trump can't sell them weapons unless the Congress says he can sell them weapons. Right. And again, this is another test of leadership for a president who has time and time again aligned himself with leaders across the country who are, do not represent, do not care for the moral values that America has long projected to the world, from the Philippines to Russia to Saudi Arabia. Look at the types of people that President Trump has embraced. And, and this, you know, I'd like to say that I'm, I'm, I'm surprised by this, uh, but given his history here, uh, no, not at all. I think, you know, I spoke spoke with a lot of people yesterday. You, you don't really have to look very far in Washington to find people who do business with the Saudis here. And there's this real sense of how small this was, like how, how weak, what the weakness that it projects to go after an enemy, a journalist, and have him killed in this grotesque way, like it's an episode of The Americans or something. Mm, um, right. But, it, but it, it, it's really struck a nerve here in Washington. And I even heard one person who does business with the Saudis say yesterday, you know, the, the next time I may just donate their next check to a charity uh, because I, it's, it's just it's, it's so disgusting and beyond the pale what's happened here. Well, you know, Andrew Ross Sorkin said he wasn't going to be going to a Riyadh conference. It's a very good move. Other American uh, reporters should do that. I, I, you know, it's interesting. I got a call from somebody uh, who grew up in Washington, D.C., is as entrenched in Washington, D.C. Uh, as anybody. And it was so it was sort of like what David Ignatius was saying about the Russians in the column last week, talking about how Bush League uh, Putin's moves have been, how, mm -hmm. how uh, it, it, that while tragic, they were so easily picked up by other intel services, and it makes them look like fools. Mika, yesterday I had somebody who was, uh, you know, raised in the diplomatic corps, knows Washington as well or better mm -hmm. than anybody else, and about 1 o'clock he calls me and says, Joe, what am I missing? I said, right. what do you mean, what are you missing? He goes, I've been here for f over five decades. This is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. There has to be another layer to this story. How, how could anybody be so stupid, so bush league to do this right. and think they could get away with it? Well, you know, you know how they get away with it, Mika? They have a guy, we have a president who doesn't give a damn about what's in the best interest of this country and our values. He cares about the bottom line. It's very interesting. Uh, Jeremy talked about three countries where we've turned the other way on, on American values and, and, and diplomatic norms. He's, he brought up the Philippines, Russia, Saudi Arabia. Guess what? There's a Trump Tower in Manila. <laughs> The Donald Trump uh, and, and, and Ivanka uh, always bragged about. I think Ivanka went over there. There were pictures all over the Philippines, Manila. Uh, so that explains the Philippines. Nothing else would. Russia, you've, you've got the, both of the, the boys saying they get most of their money or a lot of their money from Russia. Donald Trump, 
sending Michael Cohen over to try to start a Trump Tower in Russia. It's been an obsession with Donald Trump. Getting Russian money has been an obsession with Donald Trump since the 1980s when he was suckered into shaking the hands of a Mikhail Gorbachev impersonator. <laughs> I mean, that's how desperate he has been, how sad and pathetic what a no, loser beyond. he has been as it pertains to the Russians. He's made a fool of himself time and time again. And now Saudi Arabia bragging yeah. in 2015 to everybody wearing those caps that Kanye West's wearing now that he makes 40, 50 million dollars from the Saudis. He loves the Saudis. Of course. It's all about money. And it's not about American money. It's not about American jobs. It's not about helping out Heartland America, helping them pay their bills. Uh, get, having enough money to send their kids to college. Uh, it's, it's about Donald Trump and his yeah. billionaire family his and how much money they can siphon from other countries. And so he's willing to let a Washington Post journalist get killed and hacked up because he wants to make more money personally from the Saudis. And Joe, the line Welcome that to stays Donald with Trump's me. America. Yeah, the, the line that stays with me is he was an American citizen, was he? Mm. I mean, racist, isolationist, cruel, inhumane, un American, all in one dog whistle. It's incredible where we've come here with this president. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories and you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.